Hi, my name is Kelly Chappelle, and in this video, I'll be explaining the chi-square test. This video was made for Bio 47, which is Introduction to Research in Ecology and Evolution, and was taught spring of 2020 at Stanford University. Now, we're moving along in our test here, and we're at our last one, which is the chi-square test. We use the chi-square test to compare two categorical variables, the categorical independent predictor and a categorical dependent response. Now, why is it called chi and not chi? That makes a lot of sense. So chi actually comes from the Greek letter chi. And a fun fact is that you may have wondered why Christmas is sometimes abbreviated as Xmas. Well, it's not Xmas, it's actually chi miss, where the X is actually the letter chi. Now, the Greek letter chi is the first letter of the Greek word Christos. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, which later became Christ in English. So that is the relationship between the X and Xmas, chi, um, and just a fun fact about why it's pronounced chi. All right, let's move on to the real information at hand, chi-square test on contingency tables. A question you might be wondering, and I know you're like staying up late at night wondering this, are yeasts more likely to be found in red or yellow mimulus flowers? I know I stay up late at night thinking about this question. Bet you didn't know that there are both red and yellow mimulus or Antiochus flowers. There are. And the reason why we ask this question is um, normally when we have our in-person class, you would be going out on campus and finding red and yellow mimulus near the SGLC and uh, plating for yeasts. But we're not doing that. But I'm just telling you that there's red and yellow mimulus and they are growing near the SGLC right now. So in order to ask, answer this question, we need to examine the proportion of flowers of each color that contain yeast, right? And you might test to see if yeast are more likely to be found in red flowers and yellow flowers by seeing if what we actually see is different from what we predict by chance. So how are we going to do this? Well, we need to make observations of red and yellow flowers and if yeast were present or absent. So I created this imaginary data set. Well, I didn't create it. This data set was created by the gods that be in Bio 47. And the imaginary data set looks something like this. So for the red flowers, 26 red flowers had yeast and 24 did not for a total of 50 flowers collected. And for yellow flowers, let's just say there was 10 flowers where we observed yeast and 40 flowers where we did not. Again, we looked at 50 flowers in total. Now, I'm gonna do some calculations. You will not be asked to calculate this by hand. What you'll do in R is use the chi-square test function of this count table that I'll show you how we generate in a second in order to get a p-value. But I'm still telling you this because I think it's important to understand where these magical p-values are coming from. All right, so we tallied our observations in each category. So there's 50 red flowers that we looked at, 50 yellow flowers, 36 flowers had yeast, and whatever, 24 plus 40 did not have yeast. We looked at 100 flowers total. Step two, calculate the expected number of flowers in each category. So if we didn't know what these breakdowns were, what these breakdowns were, we just knew the total of yeast, flowers with yeast present, and the total of flowers with yeast absent, we only knew the total number of red flowers and the total number of yellow flowers, what would we guess? So we can guess that, sorry, we can guess that by doing this calculation where we multiply the total sample size by the proportion of red flowers, by the proportion of flowers with yeast present. So that's this calculation. And when we do that, we get 18. So again, what this is, is our prediction of if we only knew the totals, what value would we expect, what percentage of, or how many red flowers would we expect to have yeast present without actually knowing the real value. So it's 18. And we can do that with all of these other categories, what we would guess if we just knew our totals. The third step is to calculate what we call this Pearson chi-square statistic by summing squared differences. That sounds really intimidating, but really all it is, is wanting to know if, what is the ratio of what you would expect from what you observed. So what we can do is we'll uh, subtract our observed, or our expected from our observed, square it. 
So this table calculates the numerator, and so like this, and then we'll sum all of these differences to get a chi-square statistic. All right, so 26 minus 18 squared is 64 over 18, which is expected. So we add up all of these, sum to just means add up all of these, and we get this chi-square statistic of 11.1. .1. So what does 11.1 .1 mean? Well, step four is to calculate the probability of observing this chi-square statistic of this size. So kind of like we have an F statistic in ANOVA, we get a test statistic of chi-square that we can use, we can get a p-value for, which represents the probability of seeing this test statistic by chance. So we can calculate our degrees of freedom, and then we can calculate our p-value, which in this case is quite small. So what this small p-value would say is the probability of seeing this breakdown of yeast presence or absence for the two different flower types is probably not likely due to chance. See, there's probably something real happening. So we'll do this in R. Um, and the question that we are asking in examples.r is how does stigma status differ by treatment? So we have uh, we have some observations here of how many flowers comparing bags and exposed have open and closed stigmas, and we want to we want to know if that differs by treatment. So we can visualize this a couple different ways. Here's just an example with some bar plots. And just visually inspecting this, you can see that bag flowers are much more likely to have open rather than closed stigmas. And if we think about this in terms of what we know about the biology, that makes a lot of sense because bagged flowers don't have any, have the ability to have pollinators get to them, right? So why would those stigmas be closed? So that makes a lot of sense. There's also a big difference in caged, again, where we have pollinator exclusions, but in the exposed treatments, there's kind of a 50-50 chance that the sigma is open or closed of the ones that we observed. So what I'm gonna do is go back to our studio and walk you through the code about the wonderful world of chi-square tests, which is part seven. So just like we've done before, we'll load MIM data and we'll create a factor for the categorical independent variable. Those are the treatment levels and a factor for the categorical dependent variable, which is stigma status. Now, what we need to do is generate a table that counts the number of rows, flowers that have open and closed stigma in each treatment. So that is, just getting back to uh, our slides here, that is this, we need to generate this count table. So this line does that, it creates a table and it takes in treatment factor and stigma factor. Those are our categorical independent and categorical dependent variables that we, uh, that we factored up here. All right, so let's take a look at what's, what stigma count table is. Indeed, it looks just like what I showed you, right? We've got our exposed cage bagged and open and closed. So we can visualize this in a couple different ways. One would be through a mosaic plot. I'll just show you that here. Where the size of these, where the size of these of these uh, squares represents the counts here, we could do a bar plot. You can use a stacked bar plot, kind of like the bar plot more than the stacked bar plot, but that's just my personal preference. I would accept any of these answers. And so now we want to run the chi-square test. I already walked you through the mechanism of how that's calculated, but when I run the chi-square test function, it gives me this p-value that's quite small, which I would interpret to mean that the um, probability of having flowers or not is different based on the treatment. Um, we can also do a subset of data on open and bagged flowers, so that's what we're running here, and that's also significant as well. So just walking you through uh, what, how to uh, do a chi-square test and also factor the data in R um, based on our examples.r. All right, hopefully this video was helpful for you, and um, I'll see you soon thinking about tidyverse and data, uh, good data practices.